grace, mercy, and peace to you, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus said, uh, Watch. Be watchful, because you do not know the day nor the hour. Today, in the church calendar, we follow a, uh, a liturgical tradition, a, a calendar that is. Uh, has its roots that date back many centuries. And for many Christians around the world, Roman Catholic, Lutheran, Italian, and many others, today is known as the last Sunday of the church year. Sometimes it's called Christ the King Sunday, or the Sunday of Fulfillment. Whatever you call it, it is the last Sunday of the church year. And as each Sunday has its own theme, theme for today is indeed the Lord's return. The Lord's return in glory to judge the living and the dead. Next week, we begin something new. It is the first week of Advent. Whenever you start to talk about the end of the world, people start to get edgy, maybe a little nervous, maybe even a little weirded out. Thinking about the end of the world makes you think of the crazy man on the on the street corner wearing the billboard that says repent and hair. Well, we're not those crazy people, but Jesus did talk about his return. And he said some things, and, and uh, the prophet said some things, and his apostles wrote about it as well. I'm going to try and tie together a couple of themes. This is one of those Sundays where everything, from the prayer of the day to the readings to the hymn, all really magnify the one thought. Be ready. Be ready. We say it so easily in our creed. We say that we believe he will come again to judge loving and the dead. But let's not let that roll off our tongue so quickly. Let's give a little thought to it. Now our faith, as, it, as we know, uh, the teachings of Christianity tells us that we will be saved, judged, yes, but judged innocent by the verdict pronounced over us in our baptism into the death of Jesus Christ. More than simply not guilty, but innocent. Not guilty simply means that there hasn't been presented enough evidence to convict you. It doesn't say whether you are guilty or innocent or not. But the verdict of innocence, a verdict never heard in an earthly courtroom, but at God's bar of justice, you who are in Christ are declared innocent in the righteousness of Jesus because the one innocent man became guilty in order that all guilty may be innocent. Now, just because we will be declared innocent by God's grace, God's mercy, through faith in Jesus Christ, nonetheless, the day of the Lord, that's what uh, the Old Testament refers to, the last day, the end of time, the consummation, the final judgment, is called the day of the Lord, often in the Old Testament prophets. And just because we know that we will be declared innocent on that day, it will be, as it is described to us, a day of both wrath and mercy. Of wrath against sin and unbelief. And all the ways that you and I have getting in the way of God's good and gracious will to save. But also a day of mercy. Clemency. Undeserved kindness to the sinner for the sake of Christ. Now, Amos, the prophet that Bruce read a moment ago, that bit from Amos, he, he's, he's talking about the day of the Lord is the day of wrath, the day of judgment. He's got one perspective, the perspective of the law. He doesn't make it sound like something we really want to have happen. I love the, <laughs> the, the uh, very colorful illustration. He says, on that day, it's going to be like you're running away from a lion and you run into a bear. 
out of the pan and into the fire. Amos paints it as a day judgment. He sees it from the perspective, that's one perspective. He says, don't think for a moment, Amos does, that your religious, your religiosity, your affiliations, your church membership, your belonging to the choir, all the boards you served on, don't you think that all those things, feasts and assemblies, they're not going to bail you out, he says. God doesn't want them. Sacrifices, rituals, he's not going to look at those things. Praise songs and instruments, he's not listening, says Amos. What God wants is justice, gushing like a waterfall and righteousness like a river. He wants the wrong to be right. And who among us here can dare to say, I do justice, I am righteous. Not on our own we can't. We need Jesus. He, he is the righteous one. He is righteousness and justice incarnate. He literally exudes righteousness and justice. And in Him, because we are incorporated into His body, we do too. But only in Him. Because apart from Him, we can do nothing. And apart from Jesus Christ, the day of the Lord is darkness and death. Then we read that Bruce did from 1 Thessalonians, where the Apostle Paul flipped the coin, thankfully, to the Gospel side, the Jesus side. The day of the Lord in that reading is uh, the day of the Lord's reappearing and how wonderful it is. And he says, he says the, the uh, passage ends with the statement, encourage one another. Well, the words made this aren't encouraging, but Paul's taking that other side and looking at it differently. The day of the Lord's reappearing, where the dead will be raised and those who are living will be transformed like a, 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 a worm in a cocoon. We will be with the Lord forever. That's our hope. That is our encouragement, the vindication of our faith, that we will awaken from the sleep of death to be with the Lord and with one another forever. And it's often described as a wedding banquet. The whole Bible is full of weddings. First chapter of the Bible, first and second chapter of the Bible, wedding. Last chapter of the Bible, wedding. Jesus went to weddings. Jesus frequently referred to himself in, in, in uh, metaphorical ways and writing. The wedding banquet of the Lamb. In our parable today, Jesus is the bridegroom. And we, when it says virgins in our translation, think bridesmaids. You know, not the, not the frilly dresses and uncomfortable shoes part. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the attendants who, and in that, in that culture, their job was to carry lamps and illumine the way um, to the bridal uh, nuptial chamber and the feasting. Well, what is our perspective living in these end times? Nearly 2,000 years since Jesus, when he said he would come quickly. How do we live in light of that ever present promise? The parable of the wedding gives us some insight. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who take their lamps. Identify with them. Your job is to be ready. To be prepared. The foolish the month they figure they have the time. They figure that they know all they need to know. They figure that they have this God thing figured out and they're just okay. But as Jesus tells it, there are those foolish ones who say in their heart, there is no God. And they will be shut out, he says. So I have, I have a friend, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, not, a, not, a, not a member of the church, not a member of any church. Lives locally. We've known each other for a year. He and I have nothing in common. Nothing. We're both white heads. <laughs> 
tell him what's bike That's about it. He's very rich, drives a very fancy car, wears a $40,000 watch. But as we've gotten to know each other, he told me about his dad. And uh, his dad told me his dad was 98 years old. He was raised in, hadn't been to church in about 75 years, but was confirmed in the Lutheran church. I, I visit him. He says, he's in the hospital and he's not looking good. We think the end is near. So last night, that's what I did. That's what I did to my Saturday night. Drove to LaGrange and I went to visit Raymond. And uh, honor him, guy, okay? tell you that. <laughs> I just warned him. I said, I like him. He was quite surprised to see me. <laughs> you know, the, the, the guy in the collar walking into your hospital room, uh, some people are thankful, some people are terrified. <laughs> what does this mean? Some of his family were there with him. And I told him I was a Lutheran pastor and that his son had asked me to visit him. And then the church in decades. Which synod are you? <laughs> I didn't know what the right answer was. Missouri Synod. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith until life has lasted. Amen. Amen.